Top 10 Most Insane Emergency Landings Hello there again YouTube. You click to watch and you're gonna want to stay to the very end of this video because even though it may be the safest way to travel, sometimes accidents happen up in the sky. And while those accidents don't always go the way we want, other times the pilots and crew pull through and save the day for the passengers. This is Top 5 Best and on today's list is all about the Top 10 Most Insane Emergency Landings. I'm your ever lovely narrator Gentleman T-Rex and let's Let's begin, shall we? Before we go on though, why not hit that subscribe button right down there? It lets us know you like our videos and lets us have even more motivation to put more videos out. Number 10. American Airlines Flight 96 On June 12, 1972, American Airlines Flight 96 departed from Detroit's Metropolitan Airport with a total of 56 passengers and 11 crew members on board. Everything was going fine for the flight, until when they were over Windsor, Ontario, flying at 481.52 km per hour at an altitude of 11,750 feet. Feet, the rear cargo door on the airplane decided to blow off because I guess it had enough of flying all the time. Naturally, everyone on board felt and heard a loud thud, which is something you never want to hear when you're several thousand feet high up into the air with no real safe immediate way to come back down. And as soon as it happened, a huge rust of dust-filled air starts flinging dirt and grime all over the cockpit and into the crew's faces. As one article puts it, the rudder pedals smack to the full left rudder position. The three thrust levers move back to the near flight idle position and the aircraft yawed to the right. The captain of the plane, Bryce McCormick, had studied when he was in flight school the possibility of flying the DC-10 through the thrust of the engines that the surface controls had failed. Thinking fast, McCormick gave more power to the two wing engines to lift the tumbling aircraft above the horizon and steady it out, keeping it in the air all the meanwhile. The plane was turned around and landed back in Detroit, a recipe for disaster averted by a pilot who remembered something that he was taught back in flight school. So, lesson learned. Pay attention in school, kids. It might save you from a plane crash one day. Number 9 F 15 Eagle Jet On May 1st, 1983, during an air combat maneuvering training event, Israeli pilot Zivi Nedevi and his F 15 15 Eagle Jet had a mid-air collision with an A-4 Skyhawk. If that isn't terrifying enough, the F-15 went into an immediate spin, with neither Nadivi or his wingman knowing that their plane was straight up missing an arm. To make matters worse, the fighter jet was leaking fuel rapidly, and there was no way to get the thing back on course for safety. In a sheer moment of brilliance, Nadivi turned on his afterburners, which in turn allowed him to stabilize and fly the now apparent one-winged fighter jet, and he was able to fly it for almost 10 minutes before landing at a desert military base without anyone getting hurt. In a unique twist of this tale, Nadivi was immediately demoted for disobeying direct orders from his instructor to eject out of the aircraft for his own safety. But immediately after that, he was promoted again for his efforts in saving the F-15, a fighter jet that no doubt cost lots of money to make. Number 8. DHL Airbus A300B4 Number 8 on this list is a thing of all aviation nightmares, especially when flying over an active military zone. On November 22, 2003, a DHL cargo plane, Airbus A300B4 200F, with a crew of three had its left wing shot at and hit by a missile fired near Baghdad, Iraq. The plane was only at 8,000 feet and because of the attack, a fire broke out and the plane's hydraulic control system went entirely south, with no control due to the extremely broken wing. In in short, what the missile did to the plane meant that its ailerons, spoilers, elevators, rudders, and flaps were immovable. You know, the very components needed to actually fly a plane? When their flight controls went out on them, the plane began rolling as much as 30 degrees to the left and to the right. They quickly dropped the landing gear, which in reality stabilized and helped slow down the chaos of a plane about to possibly crash. And the lone crewmen of just three were able to land the plane safely. They quickly evacuated the plane and ran away from the craft, but lo and behold, the oncoming crash crews had to stop them. Why? Because they had crash landed the plane and they themselves were running in the middle of an uncleared minefield. Imagine if they had of the plan on one of those, and you'd have a real disaster on your hands. But thankfully, it never came to that for anyone. Number 7. Southwest Airlines Flight 1380 On April 17, 2018, Southwest Airlines Flight 1380 had one of its engines explode, which in turn shot shrapnel into the plane's fuselage. This would end up being tragic, as the shrapnel launched itself into a female passenger. In the chaos of the moment, which I'm sure truly was chaotic in every sense of the word, pressure in the cabin very rapidly depressurized, with crew members and other passengers trying desperately to save the woman who got hit from the exploding engine. Up in the cockpit, pilot Tammy Jo Schultz did her best to 
to reroute an emergency land of the plane in Philadelphia after it had taken off from New York. And she was able to successfully do so, with no other passengers or crew taking on any injuries. Sadly though, this was not the case for the woman, who lost her life due to the exploding engine. She became the first casualty on board a commercial aircraft flight since 2009. Rest in peace. Number 6. British Airways Flight 009 On June 24th of 1982, British Airways Flight 009, operating under the call sign Speedbird 9, was on its way to Auckland, New Zealand, when all of a sudden its engines got clogged up. Wait, what? Yeah, you see, the flight path for Speedbird 9 was apparently right over Mount Golanganog, I think that's how I pronounced it, which is a volcano, and was exploding at the moment in time. The result? Volcanic ash infested the plane's engines, and caused, what else, catastrophic failure on all four of them, one after the other. Oh, and they were flying at an altitude of around 37,000 feet in the air. If you were a passenger on this flight, you would have seen the plane shrouded in white light, and the engines all on fire outside your window. You know, seeing one plane engine on fire is scary, but you at least know the plane can still fly with the others. Seeing all four lit up like a Christmas tree though, well that's a horse of a different color buddy. And in case it wasn't obvious that something was wrong, Captain Eric Moody got on the plane's intercom and delivered this relieving message. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have a small problem. All four engines have stopped. We are doing our hardest to get them going again and I trust you are not in too much distress. Well that's exactly what every person wants to hear when they're stuck up in the air. Oh, I know that's what I want to hear. Next, in order to save everyone's lives from smoke inhalation, the captain nosedived the plane, dropping it at a chilling 6,000 feet per minute where they finally got to an altitude where everyone could breathe just fine. And at 13,500 feet, three of the four plane engines sparked back to life, and a safe emergency landing was performed. Number 5. Air Canada Flight 143, also known as the Gimli Glider. In July of 1983, Air Canada Flight 143, which was a Boeing 767-233 nicknamed the Gimli Glider was carrying 61 passengers and 8 crew members when, oops, it ran out of fuel mid-flight. Ah, who'd have thunk that? I mean, who knew? This is probably one of the top 5 scariest scenarios to be in when it comes to planes suddenly not working when they're up in the air, because even though every flight instrument and mechanic might be in tip-top shape, if you don't have fuel, you ain't flying nowhere. And also, with no fuel means no power, so you can only imagine the mood on this airplane when everything suddenly went dark and silent and the plane started tipping a little too much towards the ground. Oh, and they were at an altitude of about 41,000 feet. Now what makes this emergency landing story so unique is that the pilot of the plane, Bob Pearson, was a trained glider pilot, which did put him a leg up over most other commercial pilots, because he had the training and experience to be able to pull off what was about to go down on the ground, because where they were landing was a 6,000 800 foot runway at a Royal Canadian Air Force base in Gimlethat that had been decommissioned for 12 years. And this plane had nothing going for it. No control tower, no emergency vehicle standing by, and no way to warn the people on the ground that this hulking monstrosity was about to make an emergency landing. But they did, and they did it without injuring anyone. Truly a plane worthy of the nickname, the Gimli Glider. Number 4. British Airways Flight 5390 On June 10th, 1990, one of the scariest things that can ever happen to a commercial airline pilot occurred. A faulty windscreen panel fell off in the cockpit window, resulting in Captain Tim Lancaster of British Airways Flight 5390 to get sucked out of the the cockpit itself, with only his legs dangling inside at an elevation of 17,000 feet. The plane's co-pilot, Alistar Atchison, had no choice but to continue to fly the plane while flight attendants did their best to grab on and hold on to the man who was sucked halfway out the plane. And it was getting worse. The pilot was beginning to slip in and out of consciousness due to the lack of breathable oxygen, and getting thrashed and bashed about the outside of the plane due to the high winds and speeds. Can you imagine how frightening that must have been? That either you're going to slip into unconsciousness, or your crew will lose grip of you and you're going to get sucked out of the plane and meet a horrific end. But thanks to the efforts of the co-pilot, the plane was successfully emergency landed, and the pilot was rushed to the hospital where he was able to live to fly another day, sans any PTSD he may have gotten from that experience. Cause woof, that happened to me, I don't think I could step into another airplane ever again. But some people aren't so lucky. And by that I mean, number three, United Airlines Flight 811. If you thought number four was terrifying, well, wait until you hear this one. In February 1989, United Airlines Flight 811 
11 departed Honolulu International Airport, Hawaii, on its way to Auckland, New Zealand. About 16 minutes into the flight and about 22,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean, there was a loud grinding noise, followed by a bang, followed by yet another worst case scenario. The forward cargo door blew open, causing a huge gaping hole to be formed on the side of the plane. In a split moment of time, the explosion took out two of the four engines on the plane, and nine passengers seated in the business class section unfortunately met their end when they were sucked out of the giant hole in the plane. In full panic mode, the pilots performed a sharp 180 degree left turn back to Honolulu, where they safely landed the plane 22 minutes later. So what caused the accident? It was concluded that it resulted from improper wiring and flawed doors design. And if you think this one's bad, um, well, number two, Aloha Airlines Flight 243. Once again, in a flight over the Pacific Ocean and flying around the Hawaiian Islands on April 28th, 1988, Aloha Airlines Flight 243 was en route from Hilo to Honolulu when something that felt like a scene of the popular television show Lost happened. The roof of the plane's fuselage directly above first class suddenly blew off and what was a peaceful flight suddenly turned into a Universal Studios thrill ride. The cockpit door was sucked away. Passengers ducked and screamed as God knows what was flying around their heads suddenly. And to make it all the more chilling and unfortunate, veteran flight attendant Clarabelle Lansing was sucked out of the plane, through the roof in the hole. She was... Thankfully, the only fatality, sadly enough. 13 minutes later, the crew were able to successfully land the plane in Kahuli Airport's runway 2. Yeah, this one is pretty freaking scary, especially if you were a passenger seated on the side of the plane that had blown off, and you were that close to facing death right then and there. Seriously, how could you ever fly again after this? All right, I saved the best for last, but first I have a quick challenge that only takes five seconds to complete. So if you can leave a like and subscribe within the next five seconds, you'll get 10 years of amazing luck. Just give it a try, it really works. Number one, the miracle on the Hudson. We all know this one, probably the most famous emergency landing of an airplane ever. US Airways Flight 1549 took off from City's LaGuardia Airport on January 15, 2009, when a flock of stupid geese collided with it just three minutes later. And as comical as that does sound, it actually created a serious and almost deadly situation. As pilot Chelsea Sullenberger and his co-pilot Jeffrey Skiles steered the plane down over and into the Hudson River, just off Midtown Manhattan. When they pulled off the landing into the water, nearby boats came and rescued everyone who was on board. In recognition of their heroic and unique aviation achievement, the crew won several awards. Well, how's that for a happy ending? Anyway, that's it for this list, everybody. Like I always say, if you didn't make it this far, be sure to hit us up in the comments below, as we always try to respond and say what's up. Also, don't forget to drop a like down below, because we are top five best and Thanks for watching, guys. See you around next time.